death row is like a prison within a prison. You get two hours of wreck a week, and the rest of the time you're just stuck in your cell, you know, trying to figure out how not to go crazy. They kept us so isolated. Guys used to intensely make themselves sick. Guys would eat soap, whatever, just so they could walk to the infirmary to be outside. The things it does to you mentally, especially being in my position, knowing that I had no reason or right to be here. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do anything. I never broke the law in my life. Nobody cares or believes that you're innocent in prison. You're here. You're 144061 and you're a killer. What makes it so horrifying is that you can't tell them what happened because you had no part in it. And so you're trying to defend yourself with no ammunition. You know, all I can tell you is what I did that day. But nobody wanted to believe us, wanted to hear us. They just pretty much snatched our lives away based on a bunch of lies. Here I am, this 21-year-old guy that spent two and a half years on death row. I get off death row and I give a indefinite prison sentence. I could be in here forever. First few years in prison, man, I was a terror, man. I fought at the drop of a hat. I didn't care. I mean, I cussed out prison guards, the warden, anybody that made me mad or pissed me off, you know, got it. The weight of the world was on me and I was being terribly wrong, and so everybody was at fault. And that's how I treated people. Over the years, I saw a lot of guys bought into that personality. Even though they might have been guilty initially, that doesn't mean you're that person. You made a terrible mistake. You made bad decisions. But prison has a tendency to turn you into that person. It was a struggle every day to maintain being Ricky Jackson, to sustain Ricky Jackson and not be this other person that everybody has elected me to be. And you had to like have a place inside your head where you could go and nothing could penetrate the outside rigors of prison life every day. You know, you had to be able, you had to have that escape room, that safe room where you could go in and lock the door. I credit my mother with always giving me a central core value about who I was. You have a choice about the kind of person you want to be. And that's what she would always tell me. You went in there as Ricky Jackson, you better come out of there as Ricky Jackson. I tried to live by that, you know, and remember that and keep that inside me because I never, ever consider myself a criminal. When you're in prison and they say you got a phone call, you know it's usually bad news. You don't get phone calls in prison. <laughs> the day they told me my mother died, um, it was like telling me that they ran out of mashed potatoes. That's how removed I was from it emotionally because I couldn't express emotion. I couldn't even grieve for my mother, you know? And I desperately wanted to. I just wanted to let the floodgates go, but I couldn't. 
being in this place so long and being on guard about your emotions, you got to keep all that stuff in check at all times. I feel really bad. I feel guilty about that for a long time. I mean, I really thought I was damaged, you know, and that I could never feel anything for anybody again, but that's not true. My lawyers told me from the onset, uh, this is just a hearing, there's no guarantee. I was riding down the highway going back to court. I hadn't been out of prison in like 20 something years. I mean, just outside the prison gates. And that ride, even though I was in the back of a police van, it just like, man, this is what life and freedom feels like. I was like, God, please, I don't want to go back the other way, you know? Whatever's gonna happen, let it happen today. It's gotta happen today. Cause I don't know how much longer I can continue to do this, you know? I question it, you know, because it doesn't seem real, you know, like I'm going to wake up any minute and uh, I'm going to be back there. It's just hard to bridge that gap. It feel like I went to sleep at 18 and I woke up at 60. That brings home more than anything, you know, the length of time I've been gone, how much I've been gone, how much I've missed. You know, but I'm here now, you know, and I'm creating my own set of memories. Everything I could possibly want in life, I have right now. You know, I have a beautiful wife, I have a family, you know, I have actually kids of my own, but these kids are like my own. I don't want to miss a second of the day, man, you know? I get up at 5.30 every morning. I have my coffee, take the dogs out, let them do their thing, feed them. If it's school, I get the kids up. You know, I love getting them up. <laughs> they hate me. <laughs> That's my revenge. They aggravate me all week. But in the morning, <laughs> it's my turn. You know, you know, kids don't like getting up and go to school. Clarissa and I'll sit around in the morning. She'll have coffee. Sometimes she make breakfast, and then I'm out the door. Come back here, cut my grass. I love cutting my grass. It helps me meditate, man, you know? I tell everybody this, but when I was in prison, I had a vision. This was the dream I had. Not necessarily this house, but something similar with this amount of land. I was in my garage washing my car. I had a black car and a white car. And I had a dog, a black and white spotted dog. And this is crazy, but 
I was in the yard one day, actually, washing my car. I had a black car and a white car. It was like deja vu. Like, damn, I, did I do this? Did I do this before? I can't describe the feeling you have when it's Eureka, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but you had that moment of clarity, like, was that a dream or was it actually real? Or is this a dream? And that was real. A lot of people don't get to do this, you know? A lot of people don't get to do that. They don't get the breaks I got. It took 39 years to be exonerated and found completely innocent of this crime. We taught ourselves as being the champions of human rights. It seems callous to say something like, oh, well, out of 100 people we execute, at least maybe one or two are innocent. That's not acceptable. It's unacceptable to think that we killed an innocent person. How do, we, how do we live with that? I'm just grateful to be alive and to be here, you know, and to have this opportunity, man, to, to live out some of my dreams, you know. In the long run, I choose to forgive, you know. My time is the most precious thing I got. 